Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Intel's eighth generation of core processors, Coffee Lake, is launching October 5th, and that includes the new 6 core 12 thread i7 unlocked processor turboing to 4.7 gigahertz. Lots more information for you in just a second, but first I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, LastPass. LastPass is an online password manager that lets you save all of your passwords and login credentials for all of the sites that you visit on both mobile devices and desktop devices. It does more than the built-in password managers you might find in web browsers because it allows you to auto-generate complex impossible to guess passwords unique to every site and update them all with the click of a button. LastPass is safe and secure. Let me show you some of the features of its easy to use mobile interface. Here you can see the LastPass app on my iPhone 6. It is compatible with Touch ID for easy login. Now there are four tabs across the bottom, Vault, Browser, Security, and Settings. In the Security tab, you have the option to generate a strong new password for use on any site. It can be between 4 and 64 characters, and you do have the option to turn on and off the various sites, uh, such as special characters and numbers that some sites require and some sites actually prohibit. You do have the option to install a LastPass extension into Safari and Chrome on your mobile device as well, and the Chrome extension exists on the desktop to automatically insert your passwords and to save and generate new passwords for you as you browse around the web. A security challenge. This is very important to run. This checks how many uh, duplicate passwords you have across all of your sites, how strong they are, and it gives you the option to go in and change them. In the security tab, you can turn on and off Touch ID. You can turn on and off the pin code option to sign in. You can set it to lock immediately or set a delay, auto log out after a certain amount of time, and it's fully compatible with the Apple Watch as well, so you can set it up with that. It does include a built-in web browser if you'd like to use the secure web browser for more convenient web browsing. And then the Vault tab is where you're going to find all of your existing passwords where you can make changes, add, delete, and search for them. LastPass Free is a free download. Check it out in the link in the description below or download it from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. The basic feature of syncing all of your passwords across multiple devices and storing them securely in your uh, LastPass vault is absolutely free. There is a premium option for just a couple of dollars if you want some more advanced features. Check out the link down below for more information on that. Now, I am a LastPass user myself, which is why I'm doing this sponsored spot. I have 575 websites saved in my LastPass account right now. It's a great service and I do highly recommend it. That brings us back to the 8th generation Intel CPU launch coming up very soon on October 5th. Now, Intel is launching six different CPUs, two i3s, two i5s, and two i7s. More CPUs will be launching in the first quarter of 2018 to round out the entire product launch, but there's one K and one non-K processor launching on October 5th. There's also one motherboard, the Z370, and the Z370 will be required for all of these processors. Additional motherboards are slated to launch in 2018. Now that brings me to the first point that is going to be asked by many people. Why a new motherboard? Why the Z370? Intel actually did try to get it working on the Z270. There were early BIOSes where it was running. The problem is they ran into validation issues. There's power delivery differences and memory trace issues with the Z270 boards that they ran into problems. Not all Z270s, but a few of them had issues with the new higher speed RAM support, official DDR4-2666, and overclocking support well over DDR4-4000 and they simply didn't work on enough of the Z270 boards so the Z270s are not going to be compatible with any of the 8th generation chips. Likewise, the 6th and 7th generation chips, Skylake uh, and KB Lake, will not work on the Z370 either so you will need a new motherboard. This does, however, have the benefit of improved power delivery for enhanced overclocking. Intel feels that the success rate of high-end overclocking will be better with Coffee Lake than it was with Kaby Lake. Uh, better running processors. Now, it's true that they're not soldering these CPUs. Yes, I know I wish they were, but they're not. However, they feel that these are better and they're going to run cooler and faster than Kaby Lake did. The flagship processor, the i7-8700K, may get the lion's share of attention, but don't overlook the new i3 or i5 chips. 
four cores and four threads on the new i3s, six cores and six threads on the new i5s. It is the first time that Intel has offered those configurations, four cores on the i3 and six cores on the i5 to date. The pricing on those processors is also very competitive. I'll get to that in a minute. Another important development with the Z370 motherboard is an increase in the number of PCI Express lanes. Now the CPU still has 16 direct lanes for graphics cards, just like KB Lake and Skylake did. However, the platform itself has seen a very large increase. Skylake, the sixth generation, had 10 PCI Express lanes on the platform. KB Lake had 14. Coffee Lake has 24. You can have a lot more devices plugged into this than you could into the previous generations. That is a total of 40 PCI Express lanes available, split between 16 for the graphics cards, either one or two in 8x configuration, and 24 lanes for everything else in your system, including lots of SSDs if you want them. Do you play games? You may very well have found your new best friend. Now, depending upon what kind of games you play will determine which one you buy. In the past, I've generally not recommended i3 processors. I haven't thought they made a lot of sense. But with four cores there now, it is going to be interesting. If you play eSports games, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Rainbow Six Siege, and games such as that, you really won't need more than an i3 to get awesome performance. Want to play more complex games? Consider this. According to Intel, the new i7-8700K is 45% faster when playing Players Unknown Battlegrounds while recording and live streaming the game online versus the recently released i7-7700K processor just one generation back. Now the bulk of that improvement, of course, is the fact that there are now six cores instead of four. It really does make a difference. And if you're live streaming, the i7-8700K is probably gonna be the one you wanna buy. Now, please note, these are the benchmarks that Intel has provided. Now, I do have two Coffee Lake CPUs here, and I will be testing them over the next week or so. I will have a launch video on October 5th with my own benchmarks and results. I'll be comparing it to the previous generation of Intel chips, as well as to AMD's Ryzen processors. Lots of comparisons will be in that video. Speaking of streaming and recording videos, are you interested in content creation? If you are, this i7 should be on your shortlist. Now, I've recommended Ryzen 7 in many situations, and I recently built a Skylake X system, 8-core, 16-thread, which you can see behind me in that large tower. However, if you are looking for something on a more reasonable budget but still has amazing performance, the i7-8700K should definitely be on your shortlist. While it has six cores versus Ryzen 7's eight, they are faster cores and they run much faster out of the box. Up to 4.7 gigahertz max turbo speed, but most importantly, it's an all core turbo speed on all six cores of 4.3 gigahertz. That is substantially better than the all core turbo speed on the Ryzen 7 CPUs, making up for the lack of the two cores. It also has 12 megabytes of level three cache and an excellent on-chip level two cache, giving you great performance. I will be testing content creation on these chips, not to worry. Are you an extreme overclocker? You're gonna like the new eighth gen. There are several new features introduced with the eighth gen CPU that were not present in the seventh gen. Per core overclocking. Some cores overclock better than others and not every program needs four or six cores. Want to be able to run two of your cores at 5.2, two of them at 5.0, and two of them at 4.8? You can do that on Coffee Lake. That was not something you really had an option for before. Some other improvements are a max memory ratio increase, extended PLL trim controls, and check this out, real-time memory latency controls. You will now be able to adjust the latency and settings of your system RAM without a reboot. That's pretty cool. So if you're playing around with overclocking and frequency, you can tune them within Windows without having to reboot your system. Now, if you're concerned about overclocking, just like the previous generation, Intel offers their performance protection package. For a small additional fee, you can register your processor. If you overclock it and damage the processor in overclocking, Intel will provide a free one-time replacement for your CPU if it's damaged in overclocking. I mentioned before I would talk about pricing. Let me show you the entire table of six processors launching on October 5th. 
Here you can see the entire list. The top line processor is launching at $359. This is quite reasonable for a six core 12 thread processor at 4.7 gigahertz. However, if you are not interested in overclocking, you may want to consider the i7-8700. It's only 100 megahertz slower in the total turbo boost speed, and its all-core turbo is the same 4.3 gigahertz as the K-chip, and it is substantially less expensive at just $303. The i5-8600K with its six cores and six threads at 257 compares very favorably to the Ryzen 5 1600X CPU, and I will definitely compare it to that in terms of performance. Further down the list, we can see an i3-8350K, four gigahertz base clock out of the box. Now it doesn't have a turbo speed, but remember that's an unlocked processor for $168. Compare that to the performance of the Ryzen 5 1400, which while it has hyper-threading, does not have the same clock speed out of the box and certainly isn't going to overclock the way this will. Finally, on the budget end of things, we have the i3-8100. Now it has a 3.6 gigahertz clock speed and that is locked, that's not overclockable. But for $117, it's a true quad-core chip. That's a very good speed for a processor that has superior per-core performance to the competition. The long and short of it, Intel is back. They made exactly the correct announcement they needed to make. They did the right thing. Four cores on the i3, six cores on the i5, 12 threads on the i7. Reasonable prices. They didn't inflate the prices like a lot of people were concerned about. $359 is very reasonable for a 4.7 gigahertz six core 12 thread processor that's unlocked. Now there will be more processors to fill out that line um, early next year, but this is what Intel is launching for holiday season 2017. I am looking forward to testing these processors. And as I said, I will have full benchmark results on October 5th for you when this launches. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below, questions and comments in the comment section, and please check out the links in the video description. Check out that link to LastPass down there for the free online password vault with only one complex password to remember. Check out my other links down there to Twitch, Twitter, and Patreon to follow me or support me as you are able to. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.